Welcome this evening and praise the Lord. It's great to be here with you. And uh, I had a haircut recently. Uh, this part of it. I fell asleep in the barber chair. I advise that. Uh, let's see here. Plug right on in. Thanks for coming out on this, uh, this eventful evening. Uh, <laughs> In terms of the meteorologist prognostications. Oh, yeah. He feel the real prepared, doesn't he? <laughs> are hot. That, that water is ready for tea. It's ready for a tea bag. All right. Uh -oh. I did forget something. The duct tape. Do we have duct tape anywhere, Joel, in the building? Just throw it this way. No, don't. I just want to, is there any up on stage somewhere? I just, no? Oh, great, thanks. I don't know anyone who doesn't have duct tape. It's like, it's like, it'll outlast, outlast Velcro. It's like so important to the everyday life thing. It's like a Swiss Army knife of tapes. It must be sticking something. Oh, there it is. Down the button. Okay. <laughs> This isn't part of the show or anything like that. It's just a forgetful moment. Tom, duct tape. Salvation Army Band. See you. 
Thanks so very much. That's fun start, especially being in the rain for two days. It sort of has a therapeutic effect, giving praise and, and just uh, expressing oneself in that sort of fashion. <laughs> All right. I... That's a great tactic, Phil. Hey, you know, it works pretty good, doesn't it, fella? <laughs> I got this old friend of mine. We've been friends for over... About, about 25 years or 23 years and um, we talk to each other yeah, as brothers and as friends but, and as 40s guys you know guys, like from the 40s movies say fella haven't I seen you someplace before you know they used to talk like that really fast in black and white <laughs> hey buddy how you fix for insurance anyway 
There's a song I wrote recently. I'm still using a little cheat sheet because uh, so many of the words look like each other. And this is called I Have Days Like You. Days that sound like this. When they should sound slightly out like yes, or this kind of chord. It's that kind of, you know, anything, anything works in music, and it's just, it's the spirit behind it that makes the difference as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I pray that the Holy Spirit's with me. <clears throat> okay, this is called I Have Days Like You. Feel free to add any chorus or chorus, uh, Joel, if you want to the, to the vocal or guitar at any particular juncture. As Jerry Lewis might say, ah, oh, thank you very much. It's a great privilege to be here with you, actually, as it were. Okay. I won't do any more of that. I know that's silly. <laughs> I like the Nutty Professor voice. It's kind of, it's good. over PA, it works really nice. Actually, as it were, a class. <laughs> you gotta have the teeth and the, and the, uh, the glasses, and you gotta have bangs. I don't have bangs. No more. <laughs> they left years ago. <laughs> if I betray myself, blessed with it. If I display myself, trying to show I some years back, and it's uh, a song of praise uh, that's based out of the Psalms and uh, somewhere else in the Bible, but I call it When I Consider, which is really uh, the, the words of King David. Thank you. 
on that particular one because I went to get a pick and it wouldn't come off. And now it's there. This song here is a, a song called Wild Heart and a couple of friends of mine um, in Nashville wrote this tune. And I think it has a really good message to it.
In memory of my dad, his name's Jim, and he was an iron worker and built bridges. And uh, he and my mom, uh, they were very good parents to us, really. My dad was a hard-working man of principle who struggled with his faith all his life. And later in his life, you know, surrendered completely to God. And my mom's prayers were answered and answered for I think all of us in the family. And she had ten kids. I'm the ninth of ten. Number nine. Number nine. That was me. That was me. That crazy little uh, hippie kid. Uh, and so anyway, I wrote this song in memory of my dad who built bridges and 
uh, was really admired by his, his sons. See, he had, he and mom had Mary Ellen and Peg a long time ago, in the late 20s. And uh, then they had five boys in a row. And then five years later, uh, another girl named Kathy. And then five years later, me. And then three years later, my sister Jerry. So I mean, it's quite a span. I was an uncle before I was born. <laughs> Here comes Uncle Phil. <laughs> they, they call me Petey, you know. I was uh, just, uh, you know, Philip Tyler is my whole two names, first two names. And uh, so they called me Petey as a nickname growing up. And so my dad's name was Paca to his grandchildren, so I wrote this song for him. I'll say more things and then I'll go, so I wrote this song for him. <laughs> but I won't do that anymore. I have to tune instead. Sounds nice, Joel. sunny weather of Florida and go to Disney World. <laughs> but we had, uh, we went to Epcot Center yesterday and got shrunk and uh, <laughs> ate lunch at Chili's today. You know, it's, it's an odd thing when you end up in a place that you have down the road from where you live in Nashville, you know, it's interesting. But we had to get out of the rain, that's, that's the main thing. We have our ponchos, ponchos. Ponchos, is that what you want? Ponchos, thank you. It's always, annoying. it's always good to know there's a poncho expert in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take two.
very much. I'm going to do a little instrumental number for you. Since I'm in the alternate tuning mind mode set. And uh, this is called Nellie's Tune. I, I, an instrumental song I named after my grandmother. Um, words just couldn't describe this lady, so I wrote an instrumental. <laughs> she was some. My Irish grandmother, who lived to be 93, we used to have discussions about the Beatles in the old days. <laughs> That's not music. I'd say, sure it is. And then, you know, we'd talk and argue. And, and one day I was playing like Michelle Mabel, you know, or yesterday or something pretty. She goes, oh, that's nice. Because, you know, Perry Como and Lawrence Welk were her faves. Andy Williams, that, that the whole crowd, which I'm becoming a part of as I get older. <laughs> but uh, she goes, oh, that's nice. And she goes, who's that? And then I blew her mind, blew my grandma's mind with my reply. But she was fantastic. And she, of course, gave my mother to me. And uh, my mom was just fantastic. I love this lady so very much and miss her so very much. 26 years ago, she passed away. So this is a song. I wrote a song for my mom and my dad and my wife and my kids. And this is one for my grandmother. Now, how does it go? Okay.
I'm going to do another song and then I think there's going to be a break in intermission. Offering things like that. I just really am grateful that we, my wife Brenda, and our, two of our three children could be here tonight to celebrate in the love of God and song. Celebrate in the reality of our redemption because that's really where it's at. That's where life is at. That's what gives us hope, gives us the grace to move on in Him, higher up and further in, higher up and uh, farther in. God is good. God is good. The elements of the world and the things that come unexpectedly to us that we encounter in life, you know, uh, as I struggle with a couple times in my life, a few times, quite a few perhaps, that God is not to be blamed for anything. He is good. God is good. The devil is bad. And, and man is a fallen creature. Uh, and, and man is bad. And the, 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 the man is sick and head to toe. And, uh, and we need the reality of redemption in our life. The grace of Jesus Christ who is the love of God personified. The word of God personified. And... Um, it's when Jesus lives in your heart, that's what affects how you look to God, how your eyes view Him, how you see your family members, how you see your brothers and your sisters, your friends. The grace of God and Jesus in your life is how you view your enemies, in fact. And Jesus teaches us how. But it's not like you, you go, you know, in, through Christianity, one, and, and learn things has to be born in us. And uh, that's why we need a new birth, a new beginning and a new life, which God so graciously and so uh, willingly is willing to give to us. Uh, so may I do two songs before I break because I'm on a train of thought here. And this one is called Son of Man, which really is about what I'm trying to say. And you like that one, don't you? Okay. My guitar sounds very buzzy. Uh, it's because I put it in the overhead of the airplane, and a man came in and put a very large suitcase on top of it. And, and, and it did break the neck, but I have a feeling it was quite a jar. So uh, I can't even remember what he looks like, so I couldn't track him down. <laughs> See? No, and it's absolutely, things like that happen. Or it could be the weather. We'll find out when I go back up north. And all of a sudden, it's back to where it used to be. But it gives it kind of that oriental sitar, Ravi Shankar thing. It's not, not so bad, you know. to an instrumental song that my wife thought reminded her of a game show. You want to hear that goes like this. Uh... When I play it for her, I say, what do you think? And she goes, oh, I don't know if I like that. So I put a lead guitar part to it and cover it in a lot. So... <laughs> Love covers a multitude of bad chords. <laughs> phrase. Actually, it's only one phrase. Sorry, it's a bad pun. <laughs> Go on, you folks. This weather is terrible. It's, it's okay to have a bad pun once in a while. Okay, this isn't, but this song is not a pun. Unless something goes wrong. These pants are the wrong pants to wear in Florida, even if it is raining outside, because it's warm. <laughs> as well. <laughs> as I get older, I find that I'm, I, I try to be a bit more free. And uh, as you can see, I'm succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote on my duct tape here from one of my last concerts, 
He says, don't act, don't act dumb. You know? <laughs> but it's upside down tonight because the tape got changed around. So I couldn't read it. <laughs> okay. I spent a lot of years being serious as a musician. I'm not going to be so serious anymore. Yeah. It's okay. I've, I've met serious musicians before. I just thought I'd be so serious. At least not tonight. Okay. But then again, God is the one who's at work in our hearts, and He has a very serious work He's up to in our lives. And so here I go. rhythm part maybe. If it's a good rhythm part, I'll keep it. If it's not, I'll scratch it. <laughs> um. Does that bother anybody? <laughs> it's not like scratching on a chalkboard. Is that all right? Does it sound sort of musical? Okay. Go with it.
kids were discussing what my next set was going to be. And uh, I'm going to do a couple songs I wrote for my kids for you. And, uh, and, and, and reaching out, you want to hear that one? Olivia. Olivia? Can do. Can do, folks. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful sounding worship group. I was listening. Uh, through the walls that time, but I came up to listen on the side of the stage for a second. Beautiful spirit of worship. In fact, that song, You Are My Son, My Shield, My Lover from the Start, I used to sing that song in our fellowship in upstate New York 20 years ago. You know, with Ted Sanquist and all those folks there.
bits in as I go. I was thinking about a couple different instruments. Accordion. Anybody in here play an accordion? <laughs> Squeeze box? Um, <clears throat> in my neighborhood, a lot of Italian boys my age were playing accordion. They didn't like taking accordion lessons. And uh, uh, I didn't take accordion, but I thought I would try an accordion riff for you here. It's not an accordion. Think of like a harp, you know, like a blues harp, like a blues harp, like a blues harp, like a blues harp. Like a blues harp. That's kind of an interesting sound, don't you think? Okay. Well, it's only interesting for a while. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's fun when you do things like this. your own little music room, not in front of a lot of people and waste their time. But, uh, but this is one thing that I'm actually, I developed into a song. Uh, I made a demo of it, and uh, uh, it's called Real Life, and I won't partly do part of it because I can't really hold uh, the attention of everybody with just one guitar when, when there's so much more that could happen, like an orchestra or something like that. But it goes like this. I do this little lick, and then it, when you turn it around, it becomes Celtic. Something else that's a bit more established. <laughs> <laughs> 